In this video you will learn how we created the stones for the 3D scene. For creating the stones we also wanted to have a very flexible workflow. That means that we can easily create a bunch of stones that have a nice shape but also are very flexible in terms of adjusting. So we have used a workflow that's quite simple. As foundation we just created this simple 3D mesh and then using some modifiers we created this stone out of this simple mesh. The great thing about modifiers is that you always can disable them. Especially for high detailed objects this is very useful because you can disable the modifiers so the 3D view runs smoother and you can work better in your 3D scene. Another great thing is that if you adjust the basic mesh all the modifiers will automatically adjust them onto the new shape of the object. Here you can see it quite well. If I adjust the shape of the basic object and then switch back to object mode, you can see all the modifiers are now working also for the new shape. With this workflow it's possible to create a bunch of different stones in seconds after we have prepared one stone. And how we did that we show you right now. To start I add an icosphere and adjust this in edit mode using proportional editing according to my needs. And this is the basic shape we need for the stone. Many stones if you watch them in the real life have hard edges and because of that I add the bevel modifier at first which subdivides the edges of the object. Using the width value you can adjust the thickness of the edges. Under limit method I click on angle and now I can adjust the angle down here and according to the angle I set up the bevel modifier affects all the edges of the object which lying above this angle. After that I add the subdivision surface modifier and increase the subdivisions for view and render to 5. That means we have a very high subdivision for the whole object. And now we add the most important modifier, the displace modifier. Here under texture we click on new, because for this modifier we need a new texture. This texture I name displace big. Then I click on this button on the right to navigate to the texture settings. For the type I choose clouds. All the settings we leave as they are for now. Now I switch back to the modifier settings. And now I decrease the strength value of the displace modifier. So now you see we have this very high detail object with this uneven surface. And how the surface exactly should look like we can now adjust in the texture settings of the displace modifier texture. Under noise click on hard so we get harder edges for the displays. Then under basis I can choose between different algorithms how this cloud texture should be generated. And here I like the Voronoi F2 F1 algorithm. Then I can adjust the size using the size value down here. And we call this texture displays big. So we increase the size that we have very big details on the surface. To add some more details you can also increase the depth value. After that under color I enable the ramp checkbox then there will be added a color ramp and now I can adjust the contrast between black and white using these handles from the color ramp. And so you can adjust the displays on the surface. So now just experiment which values fit the most for your stone and also you can adjust the strength value of the displays modifier. After that I add another displace modifier which should create the small details for the object. So here we do exactly the same thing as for the displace modifier for the big texture. But here we decrease the size and the strength a lot so that we have very small details. So this is my result until now. I'm quite happy so far. But using the displace modifier causes in many cases some bad clipping errors you can see here. Now you have different possibilities to fix these errors. The first solution would be to increase the width value of the bevel modifier. Another solution would be to change the mid-level value of the displace modifier. With this value the displace moves in or out according what we set up. 
But you can see all the edges of the stone are now very smooth and I wanted to create a stone with very sharp edges. So I adjust the mid level to the default value again. Under direction normal is set up. This value causes that the displays affects the stone in all directions. So we have this rough surface on every side of the object. Um, basically this is a best setting and you get the beautiful results. But unfortunately this setting causes the most clipping errors on the object. Also we can try to change the direction value from normal to RGB to XYZ. That means the uh, color channels affects the displays on the X, Y and Z axis. But now you can see that it seems the displays is really projected from these three directions. And you can see also here we have some clipping errors. After a lot of testing I finally found a way to use a displays modifier without causing so much problems. For this we need to copy the displays modifier six times. To keep track of all these modifiers we change the names of the displays modifiers to X plus, Y plus and Z plus and X minus, Y minus and Z minus. Now under directions I choose X, Y or Z according to the name I have given to the displays modifier. And for the strength value you take care that you take positive values for the plus modifiers and negative values for the minus modifiers. And with this setup we project all the displays modifier after each other onto the object. From positive XYZ to negative XYZ. And because everything happens after each other we don't get this clipping errors. Also we have this modifier for the small details. In this case we don't need to copy this modifier six times. Normal or RGB to XYZ works well because the strength value is very low and we just create the very small details and so we don't get these clipping errors. So now we have a whole bunch of modifiers but the great thing is all the six different modifiers are using the same displays texture. That means if you adjust the texture it will be adjusted for all the six modifiers. For example you can darken the white value from the color ramp and so the overall displays gets a little bit weaker. Yeah and that's our finished stone. Now you can simply adjust the shape in edit mode duplicate the stone. Also you can rotate the stone in object mode and if we take a look on the local axis you can see it certainly have changed. And if we press Ctrl A rotation you can adjust the local axis so that it fits to the global axis. And through this also the displays on the surface will change. And with this trick you easily can adjust the shape of the stone without entering edit mode. Also if you scale down the stone you have to apply the scale by pressing Ctrl A scale and then the size of the display will adjust in a way that it has the same size on all the different stones. Now you can see these are extremely high detailed objects. And personally I just would use these high detailed objects for the foreground of your scene. The great thing about the high subdivision is that for the shading part we have a lot more possibilities but that you will learn in another video. The disadvantage of this is that certainly the render time and render preparation takes longer and also if you have a lot of stones in your scene you can't navigate fluent through your 3D scene anymore. One way could be to decrease the view value of the subdivision surface modifier from all the stones but you know it's very annoying to do it for all the stones in your 3D scene. To do it a little bit easier you can switch to the scene tab and enable simplify and here you easily can decrease or increase the subdivisions for your whole 3D scene. You can see from all the different stones the subdivisions will decrease automatically. And also here for the simplify option we have viewport and render. That's very great because you can decrease the subdivisions for the viewport and increase the subdivisions for the rendering so you can navigate fluent in your 3D viewport and for rendering you have the high detailed stones. And also you should take care to not waste memory because when you place some of the stones in the background you don't need such high subdivisions 
So then we'll go to the modifier settings and decrease the subdivisions for the rendering of those individual objects. Yeah, and with this easy workflow you can simply create giant rocks or small stones. Don't forget to save.